When a visitor on your site submits a form, there are a few different ways that we can keep them informed on the status of their submission. Four ways, in fact. Let's take a look at each one. In the first video in this series, we looked at how the default submit button is a component packed with variants right out of the box, like loading, success, and error, which map to the status of the form itself. With the submit button selected, we can head to the properties panel and find a special section where we can map each state of the form to one of the variants we were just looking at. By default, loading and success are already here and mapped. And from the plus button, we can choose to add error and disabled states, then map them to the appropriate variant. Easy peasy. In fact, it's pretty much set up for us from the moment the form builder hits the canvas. On the published site, we've got our nice lightweight mechanism to keep the visitor informed. The second mechanism to confirm that a form has been submitted successfully is to redirect the visitor to another page, which we can do by selecting the entire form, heading to the properties panel, and clicking redirect. Here, we can choose which page we want to redirect the visitor to automatically once the form has been submitted successfully. I'll select my thank you page. And then on the published site, once the form has been submitted successfully, the visitor will automatically be redirected to the thank you page. The third mechanism we haven't talked about yet, and that's to trigger an overlay when the form is submitted successfully or encounters an error. Again, with the form itself selected, We'll head over to the Properties panel, head down to Overlays, and click the plus icon to add an overlay. Here we can choose a relative overlay, which would be positioned relative to our selection like a tooltip, or a fixed overlay, like a modal that takes over the screen. Neither is necessarily right or wrong, but for our success message, I'm going to choose a fixed overlay. If you're new to overlays, the blue bar at the top of the breakpoint shows us that we're now in an editing mode for the overlay itself. This way we can eventually leave this mode and the overlay won't interfere with us editing the rest of the page. The entire overlay is essentially a special frame on the layers panel and anything we put inside of it will appear when the overlay is triggered. Over on the properties panel, we can make the important decision of when this overlay should appear. Since we added this overlay to a form, we get the additional option of showing it on success or error in addition to the usual click and hover. I'm adding a success state, so I'm going to leave it on success. I'm going to leave everything almost at the defaults, but I will select the fill and bump the opacity up to 90%. So the text in the background doesn't mess with the readability of the foreground. And the Z index, which I'm going to bump up to make sure this overlay is on top of everything. There we go. Now to add some content. I've got this slick little animated thank you component that I set up ahead of time. I'll go to the assets panel and drag it onto the canvas. Overlays themselves aren't stacks, so we'll have to use absolute positioning for any layer that's a direct child of the overlay. I want this to be completely centered, so I'll click the Align Horizontally button and Align Vertically. All good here. Let's preview the published site and see how it looks. Perfect. Clicking away will close the overlay, but if you're worried about visitors getting stuck, you can always add a button to the overlay to close it. The fourth and final mechanism is to turn the entire form into a component and create a variant for the success state. This allows for animated transitions, confirmation without leaving the page, and reusability all in one solution. Let's walk through how to do it. First things first, we've got to turn this whole form into a component. I'll select the form, right click, and choose Create Component. Now we can edit our new component. Here we can see that we've just got our one default variant for the normal state of the form, but we can click to the right of it on the canvas to create a second variant. The second variant is going to be our success state, so I'll rename it to keep things organized. Next, I'm going to select all these top level frames and press the zero key to reduce the opacity to zero. I'm using opacity rather than visibility on purpose so that we can get a smooth transition. Then I'll head to the assets panel grab my thank you animation component and drag it into the second variant. Since the frame for this variant has a vertical stack layout applied, our new component has set itself to relative positioning and is therefore positioned in the content flow of the stack. 
Let's actually switch the position to absolute so that we can position it independently of the other content we've hidden. Now we can select the first variant and drag an interaction over to the second variant. Here we can choose what sort of event should trigger this transition to happen. Since this is a form, Framer gives us some form-specific states to trigger on. In our case, we'll choose success. But you can see that loading and error states can be created this exact same way. Now we should be all set. Now when I click Submit, the form component switches variants in place when the submission goes through successfully. To recap, we're able to confirm a successful form submission using four different mechanisms. Switching between variants of the Submit button, redirecting to another page, triggering an overlay, and switching between variants of the entire form. Now head to Framer and create some awesome form submission states for your sites.